So, as you can see, I'm uh, not the same Paul Asadorian necessarily, <laughs> getting back to uh, 100%. So, I had a knee injury uh, about a month and a half ago, and uh, there was some interesting scheduling that had to take place. Um, the rumor was going around that a 13-year-old girl kicked my ass, so I'll neither confirm nor deny that. I'll let you make your own uh, assumptions about that. But um, so I, I'm here because I wanted to talk about something that I'm extremely passionate about. I haven't talked about it in a year or two and not even knee surgery that happened seven days ago. It was going to keep me from talking uh, about what I'm going to tell you today. We're going to release a new project today that I'd like everyone to spread the word about and get involved in. Um, I'm going to take you through some embedded device vulnerabilities and tie them into my plot to take over the world. So I used to have these kind of boring slides that talked about who I was, so instead I turned that into a PowerPoint photo montage, which I thought was a lot more exciting. So we do this thing called a podcast. So um, one of the things I do on the side uh, is I run Paul.com. The primary driver behind Paul.com is a weekly podcast. Well, what is a podcast? We get together, we drink beer, we have microphones, we record it, and we talk about security. And yeah, in a keyboard, exactly. Yeah, sometimes the beer gets in the keyboard, but it's okay. Um, so we've been doing it since about 2005, uh, about 200 episodes, we get some awards, blah, blah, blah. Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can listen live. We also release it later for, um, for you to listen to in iTunes as a regular podcast. We also like to hack naked. Now, a lot of people ask me, why hack naked? And I'll answer that question with a question, why not? So that's the hack naked. And we also like to drink beer, lots of beer. Beer is wonderful, we drink a lot of it on the show. We try and drink a different kind of beer. Uh, if on the show, if you have a suggestion about a beer you would like us to drink, please send me an email. We like to destroy computers. I don't know, it's kind of this, uh, a great release that we have that if we find we can destroy computers, it takes out a lot of our frustrations that we've had over the years trying to make computers work. Uh, so we like to destroy things. We've used everything from potato guns to thermite, sledgehammers, garden tools. Um, for our upcoming episode 200, uh, we've got a yet even more creative way in which we're going to destroy some computers. And not my iPad in turn down, which I love very much, by the way. So these are some of the members of Paul.com. Um, like I said, our episode 200 will be coming up, which should be a lot of fun. We'll be broadcasting for an entire day, uh, so you can tune in and listen and watch live. And my day job, I work for Tenable Security as a product evangelist. Um, Hail Nessus. Can I get a Hail Nessus? Hail Nessus. Hallelujah! I fulfilled my job as product evangelist for today. Uh, you can, uh, so basically I use Tenable products, I write blogs, do videos um, and podcasts all about Tenable's products, vulnerability scanning, um, our security center which is like log management um, and security, uh, sim sem stuff as well. You can find out about all that stuff at blog.tenablesecurity.com. So now, taking over the world. The first part of this presentation I wanted to cover, well how would you actually take over the world? And I actually spent some time thinking about what if I had to take over the world? What would you do? What would be the things that you need? We're geeks here, right? We like requirements and specifications. Maybe we don't like them, but we talk about specifications and requirements. So what are those the uh, specifications and requirements in order to take over the world? Any, any guesses? Anyone? What would you need to take over the world in a general sense? Army, yeah. People, that's good. To get people, you might need money, right? Money helps. I like money. Okay. So I, I actually, and I was talking about this with my wife, too, and she's like, you're really disturbed. I said, well, you married me, so what does that make you? Uh, so uh, money was the first thing I said. So you can buy stuff like armies and people and stuff and big cigars and stuff like that. Uh, power. So you need the ability to be able to influence those people to do your evil bidding. And of course, stealth. If everyone knows about your plan to take over the world, they're going to point the finger at you and say, well, why should you be in control of the world? Now, I already convinced John here over lunch, and he wants to join my clan. So anyone that wants to join my clan to take over the world, please come see me after. Um, so, you know, if everyone knows about your plan, they're going to try and squash it from the beginning. So you have to have some stealth when you're taking over the world. 
So then I thought about, well, how would I apply these elements to embedded device hacking in order to take over the world using what I know about weaknesses and elements and properties of embedded systems that we have today? So to gain power. And I thought about where embedded devices sit in our environments and sit within our networks. And I said, well, you know what? There's a lot of information flowing through embedded devices. I mean, how many people are using the wireless network here today? It's like, no, not me. Well, maybe you're using your 3G connection or your Verizon connection. There's some embedded systems that are set up capturing your information and passing it along, whether it's the wireless access point that's grabbing that inf information from within the room, passing it along probably to another router or embedded system. And if you're capturing that information, information is power. Everyone saw the movie Sneakers, right? It's all about the information, Marty. Yeah. So, um, you know, and the ability to manipulate this information and change it or manipulate it in transit is a very powerful thing as well. So, and of course, with power, you want to be able to control large numbers of computers and lots of information. Well, rather than going attacking each one of your laptops individually, taking a thumb drive, maybe putting it in Tim Hare's laptop, maybe doing a wireless man in the middle attack and getting a couple more, by capturing and compromising one embedded system that is somewhere uh, capturing everyone's information, I can, in one compromise, get everyone's information all at once. So it has that property going forward as well. Now, speaking of power, you want to be able to control things that you can influence yet even more power with, like electrical um, companies, power companies. There's tons of embedded systems where, conveniently, security has been ignored completely, for the most part, in all of these various industries. Now, I won't, I mean, this is a totally whole separate talk altogether, so I won't go into too much detail here, um, but great resources. Uh, if you see Travis Goodspeed here, um, you know, grab his ear. He's more than happy to tell you about them. He's doing something very similar to what we're doing with our project and trying to raise awareness about vulnerabilities that exist, and in his case, exist in control systems. Um, Josh Wright is another researcher that publishes some great information about control system security as well, especially Zigbee uh, embedded systems. So we need to make money, we need to make lots of money. So I thought about which embedded devices could I target that would make me money. And video games were the first one to come around. The video game industry is a huge industry, multi-billion, million, billion, a lot of money, billion probably, right? Flowing through this industry. A lot of the video game systems now are tied into this commerce stream, right? On your Xbox, you can rent a movie. On your uh, PlayStation 3, you can do interactive gaming. Whatever the case may be, there's some kind of financial transaction that's happening so that on my Wii, I can buy points, and those points are turning my money into Wii points, for example. So video games is one aspect of it. Um, entertainment. And now, personally, I'm kind of, I have a lot of the devices that I listed up on the slide because I'm kind of an entertainment like junkie like that. I don't like to give the cable companies a lot of money. I'd rather have more choice and buy what I want. So I have a Roku. I have the new TiVo that came out. I've got, um, what else do I have? The Apple TV. So these are all devices that sit on the network, and somehow I'm purchasing, making, buying transactions over these systems and the way it works, and I'm kind of looking, just starting to look into it, is they'll put up a code on the screen, and then you have to go to the website and enter that code, and then it magically ties it into your account. So these embedded systems are playing a part in the transactions that are happening for your entertainment devices, which, by the way, I think very soon are going to be built into every television being sold in the industry as well, and are going to be even more ubiquitous. Wireless routers, and I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about wireless routers. It's one of the things that I like to talk about in research. I have a lot of wireless routers. I built an entire, uh, entirely new 802.11n wireless network at my house to support my entertainment devices. And um, so I've got some cool stuff that I found on the embedded devices that I found uh, to support that whole network. And um, of course, we, uh, Larry Pesci and I wrote a book on uh, hacking Linksys routers. So I've been continuing picking up uh, where I left off with that research. And printers and fax machines, uh, and a lot of the pen tests that I went on, I would actually go look for the printers and fax machines because there would be documents usually laying around in the cache or somewhere on the file 